Again, I'm surprised people do watch these, and thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Uh, it's a comment on me, not on you. Uh, so, um, before we start, I saw last time some people were actually watching me live, and they made comments. And I didn't see the comments, so I apologize about that. I saw that after. I wasn't trying to be rude. So I'll try and keep my eye out for them now. Still learning this, this setup. So good, just want to make sure we're live. So today, I want to look at something very, very different to what I've looked at before because I think it's important to, for me to at least to speak from some level of knowledge. Um, so a lot of the boats I've looked at are aspirational boats. Um, in a lot of ways, boats are very, very similar and the layout's the same. They've got generally the same sort of equipment and systems on board. Um, you know, more complicated, less complicated, more expensive, not, etc. cetera. Uh, so I wanted to, to talk to one boat, which is, I guess, more in the spirit of what I started the channel, which is a Dutch cutter. It's a Dutch seal boat. Um, and I do like Dutch boats for a lot of reasons. Uh, and this one is a little 9.4 meter Dutch steel cutter. And I think it's a very, very interesting choice because um, despite the relatively small size, um, it's actually a very, very capable boat. There's a lot of interesting features on here that you'll see that the way they've designed it, they've designed it to be actually quite seaworthy. So they've really thought about it. Uh, I believe one of the boats, is, this is a very brief history online, was used as a deep sea fishing boat. Don't know what sort of fishing, uh, but you know, clearly designed to be used offshore. So at this price point, uh, and this design, you actually get a very capable boat, which can be used in the canals, it can be used offshore, uh, more coastal. If you're in the in Europe, go across channel, that won't be a problem. Uh, and on the big rivers in Europe as well. Um, USA, don't know those waters, but you know, I think coastal boat, you'll do okay. Not crossing any oceans in this, obviously. Uh, but, um, you know, if you're looking to get into boating, and you have aspirations to you know do your round the world trips and you need something to learn on learn maintenance um you want to learn how to pull it out of the water and you know <laughs> redo the anti-foul rebuild your engine uh install new electronics uh, upgrade the interior whatever you want this is a good boat for it i mean you can't really go wrong on a steel boat like honestly there's nothing you can't really fix unlike fiberglass, fiberglass you can fix it too but you know may require a bit of skill here well a bit of welding skill may mainly but um you, know, you can't can't really go wrong with a steel boat in my view you gotta inspect it first make sure the hole is not rusted uh the the, the the thickness of this the hole is okay um no um reduction over time through electrolysis uh but yeah look so less blah blah from me and i'm going to get into this so i just want to make sure that nobody is in the chat it looks like they're not right so here we go so this is it the mayor wester cotter uh so this is the websites check them out these are pretty big websites this one especially they get a lot of boats a lot of very interesting boats different models uh they tend to be more or less um i don't want to say the cheap end of the market but they're not the shiny bright new things you'll see but it's a it's a it's some really interesting interesting boats here and the prices are not too bad on this website too. So ship ship smuggler, Maklad Goliath. So ship smugladi, forgive my bad Dutch. That just basically means ship broker, and Goliath is the name. Uh, so you may want to look it up. I put those links into the comments. You can have a look. And this one here, Brightnerbrokers.com, which again is another another Dutch. Generally, they've got them in English and Dutch. If not, just translate. So just a quick overview of what we're looking at. Um, so it's a Mir Vista Cotta 9.4, designed with Shermers. I don't know who they are. Don't know who the builder are. Uh, interestingly enough, these have dry exhaust. So we're going to see that they actually have a, a stack and the exhaust comes out the top. So uh, one's got a Ford Ebro engine. Don't know about it, but it could be a car engine. The other one just says it's a tractor engine. So uh, you know, one of the advantages of you know having a dry exhaust is you can just put a, a car engine in it too so that gives you a lot of choices um to to maintain the boat you know to replace the engine uh you know if you want to replace an engine on this rebuild engine i've looked around you know, anywhere from three to five thousand euros i'll get you something from uh, somebody reputable want to replace a new engine don't really know i'm guessing the six to ten thousand range potentially 
uh, installed. So, you know, if you like the boats and you want to keep it for a long time, if you do need to replace an engine, it's not, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not going to, it's not going to um, really be such a, such a problem. And given the size and the positioning, you just pull it in and out. Uh, it, it's, it's a relatively straightforward job for a mechanic to do. So 9.4 meters, I uh, forgot to do the conversion there. I think that is, let me just give you, give me one second to foot, convert 9.4 meters to feet. Yes, yeah, about 30 foot. So, you know, not big, not small. Uh, one, there's actually two for sale. I forgot to mention that. There's two for sale, which we're going to look at. Um, but like, basically, obviously the same layout, just a couple of interesting differences I want to show you. One's from 1976, one's from 1974. So, you know, they're coming up to, is that 40, 44, 45 years old. Um, again, if the hole is okay, not generally not a problem. I think all the boats I've had have been, I think the newest was from 1974 and not a problem. Uh, even the engines were from 1974 and, and not a problem. Displacement, 11 tons. So they're not big boats. Range, we'll get into that sectionally. And oh my goodness, this is terrible. I have... Not done my homework. Twenty five thousand euros, roughly, is the price, and we'll check that out. And if you convert twenty five thousand euros to US dollars, uh, that'll be about thirty thousand. Thirty thousand US dollars, right? Should be better prepared than this. So again, the other boats we've looked at are in the million dollar range. Now, this, I don't know even what this is. This is probably annual maintenance for one of those big boats, potentially, or something goes wrong for repairs. You're potentially pulling out 20K at least on a big boat, depending on the job. So uh, definitely in the affordable range. I think pretty much if you're into boating, regardless of your job and your income, you know, you should be able to save up that money if you're dedicated, right? Saving is a, is a skill. Spending is easy. Saving is a skill. Um, so this is really open to anybody. Right, so this is a profile of the boat. Just a quick look. A um, couple of things to notice. So what we've got, we've got a small aft deck, which is raised, and we'll see that in a minute. There is a little seat on the back. You have a sort of the, what do you call it, the saloon, I guess. There's a, a table in here, and then your steering, etc. A center staircase down forward, which you can see here. Uh, you've got a little kitchen, a uh, little toilet, and you've got a forward um, forward cabin there, Yanker. You've got uh, two fuel tanks, about 700 litres each on the port and starboard side uh, in your engine room. Uh, I think you've got your water here in the keel, down nice and low, which is good. Uh, and what else can we know? Oh, yeah, and this, this is interesting. So there is actually a sort of a rear cabin there. I have no idea how high it is, but if you're standing here, so that must be... Let's say that's six feet, right? So I think it could be like three to four feet high. So at the moment, there's storage area and we'll see photos. But if we go to the next one, we'll come back to this one in a second. So this is the, the plan from above. So there's your forward cabin, uh, hatch, uh, one of these I think is your, your toilet, small toilet and a, a cupboard. Um, okay, here, sorry, you've got your, your WC on this side. Uh, and this must be storage and cupboards, potentially kitchen. Uh, then you've got your staircase up where you've got your steering controls here on the starboard side. Uh, it looks like in the photos, these are U-berths, but in this plan, there is actually a couple of steps down to the rear where they've got two beds. So potentially, it's hard to tell from the photos. I'm not sure if these stairs are there, but if they aren't there, put, it, you put them in, probably not such a huge job. Uh, hopefully you don't have to cut steel. Um, either put them in or if they are there work out how to use them you can actually have a rear cabin and maybe it's just for sleeping uh, but if you're at sea for example that's obviously going to be a much more comfortable place to sleep than forward you know don't want to be forward uh, so coming back here the other thing I just want to notice about the whole uh, you know ratios on boats are really important and one of the key ones is the depth you know what's below the water to above the water now roughly I think there's about a third under the water and two thirds above the water. Now that's just the, the general height. What you need to look at is your center of gravity, your center of buoyancy. We don't know where they are. 
we don't have any of those um, diagrams. But one thing you can notice is this is your water line. You've got a bit of fuel above the water line, but all your fuel, all your water is below the water line. I'm guessing your engine is below the water line. So this is this is your stability there is going to be quite nice. There's not a lot of weight above the water line. It's just the cabin, people, etc. But everything's low down really low. The hole is relatively deep. It's in a nice ratio, shall we say? Um, and it's looking good. Your, your propeller and rudders quite well protected protected by the hole. And you do have this, I guess, uh, skeg. Somebody can maybe tell me what that what you should call that. Uh, so on the small things you call that a skeg. So it is, you know, nice curve, nice high bow. Um, it, it is quite nicely, nicely designed, I think. Uh, so we'll just jump to the website, take a look at some photos. And are we... No. Okay. There is a window there. Why am I not seeing it? There we go. Okay. Right. So this is the first one I want to look at. Uh, so we just check the price. This is 1974, and the asking price is. What is the asking price? Maybe this one's been sold. Okay. Let's have a look at the other one. So this is the asking price 24,500. So if I remember correctly, um, they were roughly the same price. One might have been slightly cheaper. So looking at the boat, what can we tell? So this one does have a, a rear deck. You see maybe this is raised and there is um, a step down here where you've got the, you can walk basically uninterrupted, no steps all the way around the boat. Uh, you've got rails on the boat, which is good for your safety, uh, quite high. Uh, one thing here, this is your dry exhaust. So this is two meters above the water line. So as you would have seen on some of the other boats, the bigger boats uh, we've seen, uh, this sort of exhaust stack is a good option. It keeps water out of your engine room. Um, it also keeps your hole integrity. There's less, less water coming, flowing through the hole. So potentially less leakage points. Um, what else we've got there? A little seat there, which is nice, you know, so potentially you can have somebody sitting this side, that side, put a table down. If you want to eat outside, yeah, you know, it's not huge, not a lot of room. You've got a mast with a steadying sail, which is good at sea. Um, yeah, basic layout. Not a lot of visibility from this side, but, you know, fine. If you're at sea and you've got a stuff breaking, maybe it's okay not to have all that glass. Although you do have a, a bit of glass at the back there. Um, the other thing also I haven't really mentioned before is you've got a ladder there which goes in the water. Now, for whatever reason, if you do get knocked off the boat or somebody goes overboard, it's much better that they can climb out or, or you can either get in the water or out of the water to help. If possible, you don't want to really get into the water, but um, you, know, you never know. Uh, because you look at how high this is. This is a small boat and you know, a young person fit and do a lot of chin-ups will be able to pull themselves out. But, um, you know, the average age of boaters, I'm guessing, is probably in the mid 40s onwards up, could be older, um, not quite as fit as a 20 year old. So it's important to be able to ensure you can get in and out of the boat uh, if needed. Uh, and also, you know, on a hot summer's day, you want to go for a swim, you want to be able to, to do that. And again, it's fixed. So, you know, you do get ladders which you can put on the edge, hang on the edge, but, you know, in an emergency situation, less moving parts, the better, less setup you need, the better. Uh, so shot from the other side, I mean, very flat, very, very flat transom there. Uh, it looks like you do actually have rubber bumpers all the way around the side, which is nice. Now, obviously, those bumpers are not necessarily always going to match the height of your dock. But if you're going through, um, uh, da, 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 da. oh, my goodness, locks, for example, or tying up to a wall, then this is, this is great. It's going to help out a lot. You don't really have to worry about putting out any um, any any of the sort of uh, inflatable bumpers. Uh, typical view in uh, Holland. I think I know this spot actually. This could potentially be in the Biesbosch. It could be somewhere else, um, but there's lots of nice places in the rivers and national parks in Holland. And if you want to go on holiday in Holland, I would highly recommend it, assuming we're all allowed to travel again one day. 
Um, view from above. Fine, we've got the hatch. Mask folds down, that's obviously typical, it gets you under the bridges. Uh, I think this is roughly two meters above the waterline, so that'll get you under most bridges. I think the lowest bridge on the canals going from Holland to France is about 2.4 meters, uh, if I remember correctly. So, you know, you could do the canals on this one too. Uh, inside, so this is one of the cabins. I think this is the port side. That's your dry exhaust. I guess you've got air intake and, and exhaust. Uh, this is your steering. Now, looks old. I don't really like this laminate. It's, it's, all, it's all very, very ugly and old. A um, couple of equipment. I mean, maybe some of this stuff is 20 years old. They do have some electronics on it. I'm not really sure what it is maybe a gps depth finder who knows car stereo the engine controls uh bell there okay and your steering maybe that's your cutoff switch so nice little steering area fine uh this is the hole so it's a hard chine you got this one's got a bow thruster on it too so yeah 9.4 is reasonably maneuverable you don't really need a bow thruster on that size boat but obviously take all the help you can get uh, you've got some stabilizers here, which will help with your, your rolling motion as well. Maybe your directional stability too. Uh, so, I mean, paint's on there pretty thick, I'd say. It's all hand-painted, typical stuff, um, homeowners. So you can see the color difference between uh, the, <laughs> the letters and around it. So, you know, the new owners put their coat of paint on around the letters. They haven't taken the time to paint the whole thing properly, but, but fine. These are small things. Uh, that's what it looks like, so it's good to see that I mentioned. Um, you know, it's a big, small boat, what can I say? Forward, again, I mean, it's not horrible. This wood on the wall is not horrible. The flooring is not horrible. I, I really don't like this, this vinyl, but you could swap that out. If you just replaced it with maybe some white laminate, that could even brighten it up a little bit. Um, okay, <laughs> it's... A work zone it looks like the other boat is definitely a lot better uh, so we're looking rear so this on the left hand side on the screen um, sh the starboard side on the boat that should be where your staircase goes down to the rear these are your steps going down so I mean it's it's small right you get one person in there working in the kitchen uh, and that's about it you're not gonna get two people down there this is your bathroom on your starboard side uh, and you want to watch out so there's just some small things here You've got some drawers up here, person down there, you know, at sea, you definitely don't want that, probably not anywhere. You don't want things falling on below, so you know, maybe you want some railings around there, or just not put anything on it. Um, yeah, view from the other side. So it's a pretty compact little cruiser. Oh, yeah, fuses. Good old sailor radio, which are pretty popular in Europe. Your bathroom. So it's always good to have a, a toilet on board. Um, maybe you get a shower in there, you'd have to have a look. I don't know what this electrical thing is there. Somebody can tell me. Okay, no room for the shower. There's a sink on the other side. So, I mean, this is okay. You've got a pine roof, fine. Um, this looks like marine ply, it's okay the table it looks like you could get i mean maybe this folds down to a chair uh to a bed but you could looks like you'd sleep somebody running across the boat on there more photos forward okay you got a little nook there you can make this into a, a double you want to check the length of those berths i'm six foot two about 190 nearly i'm not sure i'm going to fit uh more shots from outside little rear storage there so this looks like a, a flap so you get some some ropes or different things under there <sighs> okay the rear there's your ladder you know so this one fine i think this one's not in the best condition okay so this is your rear cabin storage whatever you want it to be uh so it's not the highest but you could have some beds in there if you use it just for sleeping for bunking um, could be quite nice now you've got heaps of room for storage yeah you got ropes and tenders and eskies and sails and spare parts and god knows what else 
So, you know, use it for what you want to use it. <laughs> okay, you got some old, so these ceramic fuses. So you may want to take a look at the electrics on the boat. That's your drive shaft. Um, looks like this, is this your cruising mechanism? Could be. Not horrible, shall we say. Um, maybe needs a bit of a clean, you want to get into that. Uh, these batteries look like batteries, wires all over the place. So yeah, my first boat I bought was a Dutch boat in Holland, 1972, really bad condition. Uh, I don't think an electrician had ever been on the boat. It was all, all horribly wired and this is just horrible. So either learn to do some wiring yourself and clean it up or spend a bit of money and get an electrician on the boat. Uh, this is your engine again. So I'm guessing here, I'm not sure where we are. This is in your, I think this is under your steering maybe. So this is this is your, your drive shaft. So we're facing forward here, your exhaust and your intakes, etc. And again, look at this wiring. You got these cheap plastic connectors here. That's, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be comfortable with that. Okay, but plenty of room to work on the engine, it seems. Um, easy access on both sides, which is what you want. So you can do your own servicing. Uh, this looks like a heater, so an air heater, and that'll be your, your tubing inside and outside. Uh, the paint looks not horrible. So that's that one. So we'll power on to the second one. This one has a much nicer... Can we zoom this? Okay, no, it doesn't want to zoom. Uh, that's a shame. So I think what we'll do is, oh, it's just a small photo. Okay, that's a plan. Right, so this one has a nicer color scheme. I think it's a bit more professionally done. Uh, the anchor is a bit funny. So there's no anchor on this side. We'll check the starboard side, but You've got this tube out the front, which I think is where the anchor comes out. And we'll have a look at that. So the color scheme's not too bad on this. Obviously the same layout. You've got the wood name. Uh, the hatch has a wooden cover on it. Not 100% sure why. I'm not sure any of these boats at the moment are being used for any offshore. They're not really set up for it. Not set up for it from what I can tell. Uh, the rear deck. Now, interestingly on this one, this one has rear steerage and the the deck is flat so before you sort of had the the, the um how you say the walkway was all around the boat the same level and you had a raised section at the back this one seems to be flat all the way and there i mean the woods the painting everything is a, is a lot better on this boat uh, the outdoor steering is nice for i don't know just on a nice day or for getting in out or tying up the boat and you can see a bit more what's going on, get a bit more control. Your dry exhaust, your interior here, so some nice velour, etc. So, obviously, the same layout here. You've got a geyser, I'm not sure if you've seen them, but this is basically you've got gas flame which heats the water as it runs through the this little section. They're not great, you shouldn't have. Um, minimal gas as possible and it should only be sort of on when you're there so if you're cooking for example and turn it off afterwards and turn off at the source at the the bottle if possible um, so it's always good to replace these with boilers which either heat exchanger on the engine and 240 volt from shore yes yeah, so this is forward this is the anchor um, obviously not really tied to anything so you know you're not you're not going to be um, going to see with that. I mean, you could do it, but you'd have to put this uh, probably in the, the back of the boat, in the back um, storage area. Uh, so it's, no, no, it looks like there's no anchor winch. So that would be something you'd have to do if you're intending to, to take it offshore. A uh, little box again, none of this stuff. It's okay if you're on the calm waterways, but if you're offshore, you wouldn't have any of that on board. I don't like cluttering up the deck with this stuff. I'd rather have fixed positions. The engine, again, um, fine. Electrical looks a bit funny to me. Okay, some bollards. You know, so I mean, the back deck, that's usable space. You've got a boom over you, so you can you know have a sun cover if you wanted to, and, and that's actually usable space. 
to sit on as uh, your stabilization mast and the boat. So it'll give you an idea. Now this is obviously not going to be to everyone's taste. I just wanted to, this is a boat that I've looked at and wanted to see uh, if anything was, I just want to show people different, different options. So if we carry on a bit, just wanted to show you a couple of the want to show you a couple of the, well, yeah, the interesting things here. So both these boats for the size have a lot of fuel, uh, 1200, 1400 liters each. So I'm getting this two times 600, two times 700. Uh, the older boat has 1200 liters of water on board. The one on the right has 500 liters and 600 liter gray water tank. Now, What's not clear to me, this could just be the information in it. I'm assuming they're probably built to exactly the same specs. So, you know, it's probably two six, 700 litre tanks and maybe two 600 litre tanks. Now, the boat on the right, it says it, that um, yeah, it's a freshwater tank and then there's ones used as a grey water or a ballast tank. So it's good to just get a little bit more weight on board if things are rough, um, should sort out the movements. And then again, roughly on 1,200 litres, you know, you've probably got somewhere around a 1,000 nautical mile range. So that'll get you across the channel. Um, you know, if you're doing, I don't know what you're doing, maybe six and a half, seven knots, let's say six knots an hour. On this, you know, you're going to be doing, oh, what, six times 20, 120, 240. So maybe you can do like two to 300 nautical miles a day. So, you know, you could get three or four days out, you know, just pure running the engine on this, which around Europe is a, is a lot of time. Um, you know, that'll get you back and forth across the channel, potentially two times, you know, on the, the fourth time across, you, you'd be a bit worried, you run out of fuel. Uh, and, you know, if you wanted to jump from, you know, directly from Holland to the Scotland, you, you could probably do that in, in one hop, potentially. So it's, for a Europe boat, it's, it's you know, I think it's quite, quite usable and quite interesting. And you have 500 litres of water, that should keep you alive, especially without any showers. That should be just, you know, drinking, washing up water. So the mission of the boat, this would be good for, you know, inland waters, um, so rivers and canals, etc. So the big rivers <clears throat> in, in Holland and, you know, the Rhine, etc. Uh, the canals would get you, I think you probably get everywhere in, in Europe on the canals. Uh, coastal water would be no problem and, you know, certain limited open water crossings. So like across the English Channel, North Sea, would be okay. Check your forecast. You don't want to be out in really rough stuff in these small boats, but um, with a decent weather window, you'll be okay. And I think it could take some reasonably rough stuff. So what do I like about it? I think it's a you know interesting seaworthy design. It's been built for the ocean. You can tell it's got an interesting range. Like I said you get three or four days travel out of it before refueling it. Uh, you can handle it on one person. You know it's a small boat. You know, one crew can have it or two crew is not a problem. Um, any more than two, you know, might be a crowd. On one of them, you've got the outside steering, which I know, which is nice. Um, the price is interesting. If anybody wants to donate 20000 to my PayPal account, give me the give me the um, details. I'll give you the details and we'll, you know, maybe we can do a Hoovies garage on boats. Um, so the price is pretty interesting. You do some great trips on it. <clears throat> I think, you know, you, you never really know the movement, but just by looking at plans, you know, the depth ratio, everything's low, um, the stabilizers, you know, the movement will probably be okay. Uh, should have some some okay movement on the boat. It is short, so you're probably going to be, you know, a little bit pitchy in some steep seas. But, you know, there's not a lot you can do about that. You need a longer boat to overcome that. Uh, and it'd be relatively low cost. I mean, it's a simple, simple boat. There's not a lot that can go wrong. You know, we'll, we'll get on what you would do in more detail, but if you got it, you'd want to make sure your, your steering systems were okay, <clears throat> your drive shafts were okay, your engine's okay, um, do some, take it out, get some really good maintenance on it, you know, pull the pull the drive shaft, check your, check all your gears and bearings and greasing points, etc. Um, you know, it'd probably be worth it, it cost, cost you a couple of grand, but it'd be worth it to give you confidence in the boat. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very simple boat. There's not a lot that can go wrong. Especially if you've got the uh, electronics, electrics sorted out, you know, you, you can really set this up to be super, super reliable. 
to the bad, what I don't like, forward cabin, okay, in port <clears throat> would be okay. Um, but to see, that's just not great. Uh, you know, if you two people find somebody can sleep on the, the table uh, at the back, or, you know, see if you can open up that, um, get access from your, from your saloon into that back, um, oh, in the back storage area, back cabin, maybe, um, give you a bit more flexibility for sleeping. You could sleep in there at sea. This age is the older boat. Uh, you can address that by doing the proper checks, have a proper hull survey, really get into the nooks and crannies of the hull, lift up the boards, make sure you can see every part of the boats, uh, get a camera in the tanks, make sure there's no rust. Uh, get a, you know, if you can drain the diesel tanks, do it. See if you can see inside with the camera. Uh, just really make sure there's no rust in the boat. But there's no rust and the whole thickness is okay. You know, it's going to last another 50 years, no problem. And yeah, like I said, the access to the rear cabin, if you can, if it is there or you can make it there, I think that gives you a lot better options uh, for the boat. Um, the good, the bad and the ugly. The interior is ugly, the exterior is ugly. So you're not buying this for its uh, beautiful, good looks. Um, obviously has some severe shortcomings, but then again, you know, all boats are trade off. This is a 20,000 euro boat um, used for limited missions. Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll get on to maybe what you, why, why you would buy this boat. Uh, so for the conclusions, and again, have an update of the slide. This is a boat from last time, so you can ignore that picture. So look, it's a pretty solid boat. Again, if you did all your pre-purchase inspections, you're going to be able to, you know, have something that's simple, uh, gives you a good operating range. Uh, you can do a lot of things on it. It's a great holiday boat. It's a good training boat. Um, it's also, if you're going from a, I don't know, like a fiberglass speed boat or a river boat or something, and you, you don't really have a lot of offshore experience, you know, this could be a good interim boat to step up. So you can learn your navigation, you can sail it single-handed so you're not like relying on crew. Uh, so if you, you know, if you've got the time and limited funds, or even if you've got the money, but you've got the time, you don't have to rely on other people. You can just get on the boat, you, you can make it work. It's not gonna cost you a lot of money. Mooring's gonna be cheap. Repairs are gonna be cheap, you know, for boats that is. So you should be, should be able to run it trip. Um, and again, if you wanna use it for your own work, you know, go crazy. It's a, you know, it's a really good boat to learn on. You can't ruin it, I think. You can only make it better. Um, you know, some pretty bad amateur work out there. I'll put my hand up to say that too. But, you know, with a bit of learning, a bit of advice, uh, you know, get a professional in when you need it, I'm pretty sure you could make it a, a really great, great little boat and up your skills. Uh, negotiate, always negotiate the price. Um, they've been on sale for probably a year now at least. Uh, I'm a bit surprised. The boat market in Holland under the 10 meters has been really hot with COVID because um, people have, can't go overseas, so they bought boats and stayed locally. Thought this one might have been, these ones might have been snapped up. Uh, in terms of upgrades, um, the real ones here is, you know, it would concern me, would be the engine, engine and your driving gear. So, you know, depending on the hours, one of them I think was rebuilt about four years ago with about 1,200 miles since the rebuild probably okay but you just want to you know check that uh, get a professional on board you know as part of your well, if you've got the ability do it yourself check for engine leaks white smoke blue smoke um, check the oil uh, is, it, is it clean is there anything in it any major drips etc you guys know how to do that uh, the interior I mean for me aesthetically it's not actually very pretty I think you could replace some of that cheap um, or that, that sort of uh, that wood look plastic, you know, if you just replace it with white, you, you, I think it would really improve the look of the boat. Uh, and you know, you got some pretty crappy coverings and, and different things and, and curtains. But again, they're not overly expensive. So you know, with a little bit of, of um, effort, a little bit of money, you could really make it comfortable. Yeah, you know, look for access to rear cap cabin. Uh, check out the navigation equipment. None of these have radars. If you're offshore, you want radars. You want AIS, a receiver, and a sender. Transmitter, AIS as well. If you're going to be offshore, you're playing with the big boys then. They've got to be able to see you. And potentially a, a boiler as well. I mean, you know, you don't have a shower on board, so it doesn't have to be a big boiler. Um, and look, even if you want to do your washing up, maybe you just want to boil water. But I would be getting rid of that geyser or you could probably replace it with a, you wouldn't need a 50, 60 litre boiler, I think, just a, a 10, 15 litre boiler. 
you could probably put it where the, the geyser is even well you wouldn't have a heat exchanger then but fine don't listen listen to me too much so look that's it for today um uh, interesting choice i wanted to to share i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it thanks very much again for listening and uh, let me know your comments we'll see you on the next 